Thank you for stopping by our YouTube channel and visiting our Sunday School Teachers Forum group on Facebook. Thank you for your encouraging support for Gospel Works, where Gospel works hard to bless you with the benefits from your Lord and our Lord, Jesus the Christ. Saints, if you are being enriched with the words of God through this ministry, then let us know in the comment section below. And let your families, friends, and associate us also know by sharing and clicking on that thumbs up. I like gospel works, icon button. And if you are not already a subscriber to our Gospel Works YouTube channel, then please encourage us today. By becoming a subscriber today to this YouTube ministry, thank you again for dropping in to visit us today. Remember, Gospel works hard for you. We need your spiritual help, prayers, understanding, and encouragement. Our content is not generated by an artificial intelligence software engine. The voices you hear are text-to-speech voices and currently are the only English ethnic voices available with text-to-speech software. The voices don't sound like most minority ethnic voices we hear in our homes and churches, they are majority voices, but nevertheless saints, the gospel of Jesus Christ is being generated audibly, so that you and I and others can hear what the word of the Lord is saying to our souls that need the saving power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And amen, and a thank you Jesus goes here saints. Because God is good all of the time. And all of the time God is good. We the united voices of hope, pray that the grace and mercy of God, will continually abide in you and with you throughout this year, and that you will receive the healing words of Jesus into your open hearts every day, and be blessed. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, please send your anointing and wisdom upon us like the latter day rain, so that we can spiritually grow into the perfection you have desired for us. Please anoint our minds, bodies, and souls to be holy vessels for you Lord God every day. Let your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us today, and forevermore. Let good works be the hallmark of our journey, for your glory and majesty, we pray, in the name of your Son, and our Lord and Redeemer Savior Jesus. Let's get to the lesson. We need to become current with today's lesson with a quick review of the previous related lesson. In our lesson on last week we studied Haggai 1, 1 through 11, entitled Obey the Lord. God sent the prophet Haggai to demand that they rebuild the temple of their God which was destroyed by the invading Babylonians. The children of Israel were being selfish, short-sighted, and dismissed their obligations and duties, as the chosen people of God, to worship Him properly. They failed to acknowledge their God in all of their ways, and suffered intensely for their transgressions. The commentary at F.B. Maya wrote an article called, Selfish and Short-Sighted Drift. Gospel Works has paraphrased the article written in Old English, into something a bit more contemporary and easier to understand. The returned exiles had been experiencing a succession of bad seasons. They had sown much, and reaped little. Their money ran out of the bag as quickly as they put it in, a drought lay on all the land, and the reason for it was to be found in the neglected temple. How frequently our disasters and losses in business arise from our failure to remember God's cause. We say that we have not the time, nor can afford to finance the Lord's work with money with free will offerings and pledges and tithes. And see no necessity for setting apart on the Lord's day, a time of worship and praise, and thanksgiving, or a daily time and period for meditation and prayer. When we see the negative things that are happening to us saints of God. They really are. Seeds of neglect that have sprung up like weeds in our gardens. We should realize at that time and point that we are not fully trusting in God, and relying upon His provisions. We are neglecting the works of God and transgressing. Because we are putting our trust in an unsafe, false economy, under the leadership of Satan. We are throwing away what God has provided. More dear saints. Than what we are able to save and share with others. Get an understanding saints. Frivolous spending is the same as withholding money that God has provided for our needs, and leads us to walk in poverty. The wise farmer Brown does not waste time collecting tools, sharpening them, and shining them. For display day, after day from dawn to dusk, the farmer must eat so he goes to work faithfully in the fields. If he neglects the exercising of his faith in the fields, 
he goes hungry. If we neglect our faith in the fields of God, people go hungry, and we go hungry too, because we are spiritually poor in spirit. God is an orderly God, and when we allow Him to order our steps daily in the fields, we are more productive, more enriched, more abundant, more blessed, because we belong to God and we acknowledge that fact every day of our lives, every step of the way, along the path of righteousness for His name's sake. We will begin our study with Lesson 2 for the 9th of June, 2024 entitled, Trust God's Promises. Today's Sunday School Scholars Lesson Bible Truth. God's promise to bless is linked to our promise to obey. Today's Sunday School Scholars Lesson Memory Verse. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Haggai 2, 9. Today's Sunday School Scholars Lesson Focus Bible Aims. By the end of the lesson, we will know God's promises to the Israelites linked to his command to rebuild the temple, trust that God pledges assistance and prosperity in response to obedience to him, and identify ways that God seeks our obedience and how we can demonstrate it. Today's Sunday School Scholar Less Names Our Bible Life Need Aim Is to develop a practice of relying on God's Word. Our Bible Learning Aim is to realize that God blessed Israel to build a great temple, because they obeyed the commandment to work. Our Bible application aim, is to commit, or recommit our ways to God realizing that the Lord promised that He will supply our every need. Our Sunday School Scholars Bible Response Aim, is an elective. We can write in a journal what the Lord speaks to us daily and how He answered our prayers, and share a portion of our journal experience with our Sunday School classmates. Today's Sunday School Scholars Bible Based Scriptures Haggai chapter 1, verse 12 through 15, and Haggai chapter 2, verse 1 through 9, King James Bible. Haggai chapter 1, verse 12, Then Zerubbabel the son of Shaltiel, and Joshua the son of Josedech, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Haggai chapter 1, verse 13. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. Haggai chapter 1, verse 14. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua the son of Josedech the high priests, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people, and they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Haggai chapter 1, verse 15. In the four and twentieth day of the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. The coming glory of the temple. Haggai chapter 2, verse 1. In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Haggai chapter 2, verse 2. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedech, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Haggai chapter 2, verse 3. Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory and how do ye see it now is it not, in your eyes, in comparison of it, as nothing? Haggai chapter 2, verse 4. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedech, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. Haggai chapter 2, verse 5. According to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. Haggai chapter 2, verse 6. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. Haggai chapter 2, verse 7. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. 
Haggai chapter 2, verse 8. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts, and in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. The commentary at F.B. Mayer entitled his comments on today's study scriptures, The True Glory of God's House. One earnest man can arouse an entire community, let a fire glow in our hearts, and it will spread, assured of God's presence and favor. Within three weeks the whole land was awake. Note the cooperation of God's Spirit with the message of His servant. The Lord stirred up. Let us ever seek and rely on His cooperation. We are witnesses, so also is the Holy Spirit. Three prophecies accurate by Haggai chapter 2. In the first, Haggai 1, 1 through 9, the Jews are encouraged to persevere. Although there was no comparison between the glory of Solomon's temple and the splendor of this temple, they must not be discouraged, though they might deplore the absence of the sacred fire of the Shekinah, of the ark with its cherubim, of the Urim and Thummim, and of the spirit of prophecy, yet the Messiah's presence, which would be associated with the second temple would more than compensate for their deficiency. Since Jesus Christ is the antitype of the Shekinah's sacred fire, the ark of the Lord, and the Urim and Thummim spirit of prophecy, if we lack many of the advantages and attractions in which others excel, let us be more than satisfied to possess Christ, and be it always remembered that Christian worship seeks to realize the presence of him who said, I am in the midst. Without that, a cathedral is an empty void. With that, a bun will be heaven. Today's Sunday School Scholars Bible-based scriptures, Light on the Word. Zerubbabel was the son of Shield Heel from the line of Judah. His name means seed or offspring of Babylon. He was recognized as a prince while in captivity. He was believed to be a man of great influence in direct service to King Cyrus. He led the first wave of exiles from Babylonian captivity. Zerubbabel was given favor with the king to rebuild the second temple and re-establish worship in Jerusalem. Joshua was a common name among the Hebrews. This Joshua is distinguished as son of Jehozadak. The name means Jehovah is his help or Jehovah the Savior. His father, who was also a priest, served while in exile, which means Joshua was probably born in exile, appointed by King Cyrus in 535 BC after the captivity in Babylon. He and Zerubbabel led the first wave of exiles in returning to their homeland and rebuilding the temple. Today's Sunday School Scholars Teaching the Bible Aim Students will develop a practice of relying on God's Word. Today's Sunday School Scholars Lesson Introduction is entitled, Renew the Rebuilding. In the previous lesson, we saw how the exiles were released from captivity and returned with great energy to rebuild the Holy Temple of God, where they could gather and worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. However, a series of setbacks led them to stop rebuilding God's temple. Through Haggai, God rebuked them for leaving the rebuilding of the temple unfinished when faced with opposition. The Lord called on them to consider their ways, Haggai 1, 5, 7, and realize the results of their irreverence when his commands were selfishly ignored, economic downturn, lost wages, and unfruitfulness verses 7-11. God called the political and spiritual leaders to direct the people away from their folly, with God on their side and the favor King Cyrus had given Zerubbabel and Joshua for rebuilding the temple, they had no excuse. Verse 1. Bible Learning Aim As Sunday School Scholars of the Holy Bible we will know that God blessed Israel to build a great temple because they obeyed the commandments to work. Today's Sunday School Scholars Bible outline is divided into four sections. Section 1 is entitled, Obeying the Summons, Haggai 1.12. Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, represented political power while Joshua, the high priest, represented spiritual authority. These two led the first of the exiles from captivity back to their land. As the people were summoned to obey the voice of the Lord through the prophet, they once again feared God. Haggai's words must have pierced their hearts as they reflected on the current state of affairs. A word from the Lord is not always good news. Often the prophets brought bad news, telling the people of their sins against God. 
In this case, the incomplete temple reflected the spiritual state of the returning exiles, who should have shown their gratitude to God by reinstituting worship in a rebuilt temple. Zerubbabel and Joshua set the tone in leading the people and demonstrating what it meant to hear the word of the Lord and promptly obey. The fear of the Lord restored, verse 12. Haggai 1:12. Then Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua the son of Josedech, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Probably nothing pleases the Lord more than an obedient, positive response from those he speaks to. Such was the response from all the remnant, meaning those who remained alive, of the returned exiles, and their leadership. Haggai could only have been pleased that the people did not protest at his words, but set about at once to do as he instructed. Not only had the work of rebuilding the house of God begun anew, but the chosen people found a renewed spiritual zeal, and did fear, meaning to revere respect, or worship, the Lord who had delivered them from Babylonian captivity. Section 1 Light on the Word Haggai's Mission In the second year of King Darius' reign, Haggai was sent as God's mouthpiece. His mission was to hold the political and spiritual leadership accountable to complete the temple, but he used a different message strategy to motivate completion. Haggai spoke to those who would have been old enough to remember the brilliance of the former temple. He called on them to recall the glory of Solomon's temple as they continued work. God had always been faithful to his people. Section 2 is entitled, Recalling the Temple, Haggai 2, 1 through 3. Those old enough to recall the first temple would have been very young. Now they were the elders who lived to describe its former glory. Ezra recorded that when the foundation was laid for the second temple, some rejoiced because restoration of the temple represented their return from captivity. However, the older people who remembered the first temple wept because they knew it would be a far cry from its former glory. Ezra 3, 8 through 13. The former glory revisited verses 1 through 3. Haggai 2, 1, in the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Haggai 2, 2, speak now to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Josedech, the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Haggai 2, 3, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory, and how do ye see it now, is it not in your eyes in calm Paris and of it is nothing? The 21st day of the 7th month. Tishri on the Jewish calendar would have been October 17, 520 BC on our contemporary calendars and would have been the 7th or last day of the celebration of the Feast of Tabernacles see Numbers 29, 32-34. On the same date, 440 years earlier 960 BC, Solomon finished the original construction of the temple, see 1 Kings 6 38 and 8, 2. It is fitting then that God chose this day to once more speak to the Jewish leadership and his chosen people. Just under a month had passed since they began to rebuild the house of God. It is conceivable that the people had become discouraged by the way the structure was looking and had slowed or halted their work in response. Haggai here spoke pointedly to the people's discouragement. In 587 BC, Solomon's temple had been destroyed by the Babylonians, coupled with the fact that the Jewish captivity by the Babylonians had lasted 70 years. It was likely that some of the oldest of the returned exiles would have remembered seeing the splendor and glory of God's house with their own eyes. Then, remembering that house in her first, meaning former or most prominent, glory and viewing the reconstruction in progress, they would have grown discouraged. The reconstruction was pitiful, or as nothing, in comparison. Such discouragement is not easily hidden and, by this point, had infected the whole community. And a pillar of fire by night to guide them Exodus 13 21 and 22. In addition, an angel went before them as they sought to go into the promised land to overtake their enemies, Exodus 23 20. Just as God had been with his people to help them conquer the powerful nations when they entered the land the first time, he was still with them and would keep his covenant. 
Today, we have God's abiding presence through a personal relationship with His Son Jesus Christ and the indwelling of His Holy Spirit with us. Section 3 is entitled, God's Promises, Haggai 2, 4-5. Scripture bears out that God always assures His people of His faithfulness to His promises. Haggai now moves from rebuking the people to encouraging them. He proclaims that they should not despair over the former temple. It was more important for them to know that the Lord of hosts was with them, through use of His name as the Lord of hosts, or Lord of armies. God reassured His people of His divine protection. He promised that He would watch over them as they completed the restoration of the temple. He reminded them of the covenant he made to their ancestors in the exodus from captivity out of Egypt. God's promises are timeless and he is faithful. Therefore, Haggai encouraged the people to move forward without fear, just as he had been with them and their ancestors in Egypt, and with them through their captivity in Babylon. God continued to be with them in the land. His abiding presence remained. Verse 5. The promise reaffirmed verses 4-5. For yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedech, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. 5 According to the word that I covenanted with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. Part of the function of leadership is to guide a group into accomplishing what it might not think possible. So Haggai addressed his remarks to the political, Zerubbabel, and spiritual, Joshua, leadership of the people as well as to the people themselves. He encouraged them to yet now be strong, have chazak, kazak, meaning take heart or hold firmly in the resolve to which they had committed themselves and continue the work, have asa, asa meaning doing or practice, of rebuilding the temple. Through Haggai, the Lord was communicating to the people that the work they were doing was not to be despised. I am with you, Habnum, Nedum, meaning utterance or declaration preceding the diving name, said the Lord of hosts, Heb, Yehovah, Yehovah, meaning the existing one and the proper name of the one true God. Haggai wanted the people to understand that though they were the instruments through which God was working to rebuild his house, he was, in fact, in their midst, the very same God that covenanted, Heb Karath, Korath, meaning to establish or promise, with the people to let them from captivity out of Egypt across the Red Sea was at work with them in rebuilding the temple. That knowledge was intended to give a sense of relief and joy to the people. They were not laboring in vain. No matter how the physical appearance of the structure might look, God's Spirit remained with them. Therefore, the people only needed to be faithful to complete the work He had called them to do, because God was with them. They did not need to fear disappointing Him and should not be discouraged themselves. Section 3 Light on the Word is entitled, Judgment Against Other Nations. In this phase of Haggai's message, his pronouncement moves to judgment against the other nations. Jehovah Sabaoth, Lord of Hosts, is the mighty warrior who will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. Verse 6, God here says that he will literally agitate the heavens and the earth, sending forth a wave to upset the status quo. Babylon, Persia, and later Rome would exert great power over Israel as a nation and all would seem lost. However, this message was one of hope not only for immediate restoration but also a projection of what was to come in the future. Section 4 is entitled, Splendor After Judgment, Haggai 2, 6-9. God promised to fill the new temple with glory and splendor greater than that of Solomon's temple. God's peace, some translations use the word prosperity, will rest in this temple. In the book of Revelation, John recorded his vision, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Revelation 21, 1 and 2. As a glimpse of what is to come, Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of this promise of latter glory because it is through him that all the nations of the world are blessed. The New Prophecy Revealed Verses 6-9 through 9. 
6 for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. 7 And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. 8 The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. 9 The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts, and in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Haggai then encouraged the people even more by reminding them of just exactly who is who have commanded the rebuilding of his house. He is the self-existent one who established the heavens, earth, sea, and dry land, though it has not yet happened, yet once, it is a little while better understood as one moment yet, a little while, the day will come when he will shake, Hebrosh, Roash, meaning to be made to quake. The nations whose desire will then become to come to his house, though there have been many shakings of different countries across the centuries, there has not been a final shaking that has involved both earth and sky. See Hebrews 12:26. Looking through prophetic eyes, Haggai here spoke of a future time when the Messiah will occupy the temple they are restoring. It will be then that the temple will be filled with God's glory. Haggai then reminded the people that both silver and gold belonged to God and he had the ability to lavish upon the temple so much of it that the latter house, not the one of their efforts, but the one that Christ will build when he returns to the earth to set up his kingdom and rule, will be greater than the original temple Solomon built, while the inhabitants of Haggai's Palestine would not live to see how God would fulfill his promise. They could take heart that the labor of their hands, no matter how pitiful it seemed in their eyes, would serve God's greater purpose. God was using the rebuilding of Solomon's temple to prepare the hearts of his people for the indwelling of his spirit. The Apostle John pointed to this time when he told us that in the New Jerusalem, there will be no temple because the temple is the Lord God the Almighty see Revelation 21 22. It will be then that God will give peace. This will not be a peace that the world understands. See Philippians 4, 7. But God's peace, which promises ultimate contentment and satisfaction. This is the wonderful hope for which we all wait. Sunday School Scholars Lesson Bible Application Aim As Sunday School Scholars of the Holy Bible we will commit, or recommit our lives to God our Father in Heaven, knowing that the Lord promised that He would supply our every need. God has already demonstrated his love for us by sending his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, to die for our sins, so that we could live in peace eternally with our creator. We can demonstrate our love in return by faithfully obeying the words and commands of God daily. After the prophet Haggai reminded the remnant of God's covenant with them, the exiles were motivated to not only rebuild the temple, but to re-establish their relationship with the God of their fathers. We too can take God at his word, if we have fallen into sin, or wandered from God, Jesus invites us to recommit our lives to our Father God, we were created to bring God glory, and to be his treasured possession, as we commit or recommit our ways to him, the Lord promises that our plans will succeed and we shall be established per, pro, this is your prayer today in the precious name of your Son Jesus, the Christ. Dear God you are worthy of all of our praise, because you have done great things for us. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Amen.